Hey, hi everyone. Um, I'm Monica Michelle. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I have Ehlers Danlos, POTS, mast cell activation syndrome, fibromyalgia, other stuff too. Um, but you know how this goes. If you have one, you would get them all. Um, aside from all that, I also am a mom. Um, just because I'm disabled and sick and spend way too much time in pajamas and in my bed does not mean that I'm not expected to also be a really good mom, not just expected. I also really try for it too. Um, so here's just like a few things that have really worked in our family, aside from just the basics of age appropriate teaching chores. Um, kids can actually do these things. It's fantastic. They can do their own laundry. They can um, uh, cook basic meals. And if they're all not old enough for you to trust them in the kitchen by themselves, um, normally you can at least trust a toaster oven or a microwave to at least be relatively safe. So in our refrigerator, we have different sections at kid size handing <laughs> is all of their basic snacks. Um, just the things that they can eat like cheese sticks and uh, fruit pocket stuff. And then one drawer underneath is every dinner that they can make using a microwave or a toaster oven. That means that when I cannot get out of bed and I cannot make it to the kitchen, they still can make themselves food. It is been one of my best life hacks ever. So the other thing we have, which my daughter even asked for when I'm having a good day, <laughs> is called our darling slug days. This started when she was a toddler and on the days where I can't get out of bed, I'm going to have to readjust this poor little arm here. Um, on days where I can't get out of bed, we have her darling slug days, which means we don't leave the bed. <laughs> I have all of the, um, well, when she was little, I had more age appropriate stuff, just like right by the bed. I had all of our crafting supplies and I had um, the iPads and everything else that we would need for the day within arm's reach. And we would make up stories. We would play imagination games. And my personal favorite is from Alice in Wonderland. It's called 10 Impossible Things. We play this all the time in the car, um, on the way to school, everything. And it's a great one to play even from bed, which is we try to name 10 impossible things. Now, if you're also a writer like I am, you can totally mine your children's imagination. <laughs> and when I was writing a fairy book, I would ask her to name 10 impossible things that you would find in a fairy circus. Uh, I think eight of them made it into the book. She's amazing. Um, but you can really choose anything. You can choose like, you don't even have to choose anything at all if your kids just want to go completely wild with it. And from there, you can even start to make books. And I'll probably do another video some other time on how you can make a kid's book from bed and from your iPad. Totally possible. Even your kids can do it. Um, there's a few apps out there that really help, but you can even make your own books while you're sitting there, which is really fun. My daughter is very into fashion and um, we both love special effects makeup. So we would do some real, um, we do some marathons of uh, Project Runway and of, um, oh, Face Off, the um, sci-fi show. And I love these reality shows, especially the Face Off because it showed her how to work in a team. It showed her how to cooperate with others. And we would also try to send the challenges ourselves with just like what we would do with those challenges, which really helped her brain start like clicking in. I have a little like um, table that goes across my lap and we would use that for our own just free range drawing. We would read books together. I would um, try to inflict Harry Potter on her. She's not as into Harry Potter as I am. That's, that's still kind of depressing. So these are just some ideas that you can use from um, the parenting from bed. Now, this is my last little tip for today. And it's my favorite because when I was oh, in my early 20s, I had to have major surgery. I was a single mom of a toddler boy who was incredibly active and I didn't have any help. And my surgery meant that I couldn't stand for, I think it was almost like six weeks I wasn't able to stand. So I had a toddler who was running everywhere and I couldn't chase after him not the best situation. Um, but this can work for you in any situation where you're not really able to chase after kids, but you need to keep a really like general idea of where they are. I gave him, and this is like way, way back when phones were hardly any um, pixels at all, but I gave him the phone to like walk around and take pictures. And he was so excited about this that he would come running back to me every like two or three minutes to show me all the pictures he took. That was exhausting, but it he was safer and I could hear what he was doing. It was amazing way to handle a not ideal situation. But if you think about this for any situation, like if you're in a wheelchair or if you have a cane and you have a toddler who's running around, if you give them an activity, like go take pictures of everything green 
or um, you know, something along those lines, you can really buy at least an hour or two <laughs> of knowing that they have a real activity that they are set on. Okay, those are just a few ideas. Um, if you have more, I love to hear them. Please, absolutely. I don't know if you can comment on this. This is a very new format for me. I am Monica Michelle, and I run a podcast for people with chronic and invisible illness, and that's called InvisibleNotBroken.com. You're welcome to head over there and leave comments or chat with me. Um, I'm also on Twitter, so please comment on Twitter. That's InvisibleNotBRK. So hopefully I'll hear from you. Have a great day, and um, I will be back with uh, the apps that you can use to keep yourself sane while you're on bed rest. That's going to be a fun one.